Happy Sabbath, everybody. Uh, we bring you another lesson. Uh, I'll be your reader for the night. And the title of the lesson is The Christmas Story of Deception of the Enemy. And now I'll turn it over back to the Chief Reader, T Boogie. Happy Sabbath, Israel. We're back again, once again, to dispensate the word of God. Having a little technical difficulty, but we're going to work through it. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, like the young lion said, the title of tonight's lesson, he already gave it to you. I'm going to give it to you again. The Christmas Story, A Deception of the Enemy. You know, what we're going to do tonight, uh, I know a lot of the brothers around the world tonight, this coming up in these next couple of weeks or so, going to be giving you uh, some lessons on uh, the deception of Christmas. So what we're going to do tonight, we're just going to break down some of the facets of this 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 Christ mass, as, as it's called, uh, and show you that how how definitely in contradiction it is to the word of God, that it is not of God. You can't find the word Christmas in the Bible. You can't find the word Christ mass in the Bible. Uh, speaks nothing about uh, a perverted man in a red suit coming down the chimney giving presents. You can't find nothing in the Bible. So if it's not in the Bible, it's not of God because everything God wanted you to observe, like his holy days, his feast days, and the Sabbath day, everything he wanted you to observe, he specifically detailed it out in, in his word. So we need to look at this thing, you know, as far as this idolatrous pagan worship, because that's all it is, is paganism. They try to put Jesus, attach Jesus' name to it and uh, try to make it into something good and something holy as, as they see it, or what they call holy, not what God calls holy. So we're going uh, gonna to dissect it. We're going to go through it. And uh, we're just going to prove that these people were keeping this pagan tradition way before even Jesus Christ came in, in the flesh. So with that, we're going to get it kicked off. And our first <clears throat> scripture reading is going to be in 2 Timothy, the chapter 4. And we're going to read verses uh, 3 through 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. When you get it, go ahead and read. For the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. But after the work of their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. And see, that's, that's what Christmas is. It's just a fable. You know, it, it, it's no truth to it. Everything about it, you know, they want you to believe that reindeers can fly. They want you to believe that, you know, that this fat man in this white, in this red suit is going to be able to squeeze down your chimney and drop off presents and all that kind of it's, it's nothing but lies, lies, and more lies. It's not, no true to it. It's a fable. And he, in the Bible, just what, what the brother just read, said, in the last days, and we in the last days, he said, they going to turn away their ear from hearing the truth. It's just like when you tell people, you know, I know my family member, my wife, and myself, my kid, we've been telling people, you know, since we came into the truth and the knowledge of God, hey, Christmas is wrong. They tell you, I don't want to hear it. I'm going to do what I want to do. But you say you're a Christian. You say you follow, you love God. You say you follow the Bible. The Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, don't do what the heathen do or the nations do. But, you know. We just read it. They're going to turn their ears away from hearing the truth. They ain't going to want to hear what does say the Lord, but they're going to try to put his name and attach his name to any and everything. Uh, so, you know, cause we're going to go to the next scripture. The next scripture is going to be in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. And we're going to read three verses here. Verses 3 through 6. When you get it, go ahead and read it. As I besought thee to abide still at uh, Ephesus when I went un into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Oh, stop right there. He, this is Paul talking to Timothy, and he's telling that he's charging him that no matter where they go in Ephesus or Macedonia, that you that he charge them they, they teach no other doctrine but the doctrine of this Bible, not the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. Not the doctrine of Christmas. And we're going to try, I'm going to try to stay focused just on Christmas. But he said, teach no other doctrine, meaning no other doctrine that it, other than what is written in this Bible. Go ahead. 
neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in in faith to so do. And he said, look, when you don't don't give in to these, don't teach these fables or, or, or pro, progenerate these fables because it, when you what you minister, well, I mean, when you do this, they only create questions and doubt when you procreate or, or, or just push along these fables. All right, continue. Verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and faith Unfeigned, unchained, unmovable. From which some, having swerved, having swerved, have turned aside into vain jangling. And that's what that's what that's what this whole scene is. Ain't number vain jangling. It's for nothing. Y'all doing a whole lot of wish you a merry Christmas, have a happy new year, uh, Feliz Navidad. However you want, it's just vain jangling. It's for nothing. You just doing it for nothing. All right. Uh, let's go to our next verse, and then we're gonna we're gonna do a little history. Let's go to our next verse, which is uh, John chapter the four. John four, and we're gonna pick it up at verse twenty two. We're gonna read verses twenty two through twenty four. John the four, verses twenty two through twenty four. When you get it, go here. You worship. You know not what. Stop right there. Now, this is Jesus talking to the to woman, the Samaritan woman at the well. And he just told her, ye worship, ye know not what. Ask the average person who keeps Christmas and ask him, what are you worshiping? Well, I mean, what, do you, what is Christmas all about? They're going to tell you it's about the birth of Jesus. But really, it's about pagan practices and pagan worship. Ye know not what ye worship. You don't know. And, and, and that was a brother, a uh, great brother uh, in, in the IOG. He had a lesson, and it was a great lesson. He said, in ignorance, they worship the beast. And that's what you guys who keep Christmas, that's what you're doing. And out of ignorance, because I say this all the time, I don't care if a million people tell a, the tell a same lie for a million years, it's still a lie. And I don't care how you tell it, how pretty you fix it up, how nice you want to make it seem, how holy you try to make it be, a lie is a lie is a lie. So you don't know what you're worshiping when you're keeping this practice of Christmas. Continue. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Yeah, and see, we know what we worship because we can read it out the Bible. Everything we, we believe in, we can read it out this book. You can't read Christmas out this book. And we're going to dissect each one of these facets, or just some of them, not all of them, about this pagan practice of Christmas and these lies that they didn't, they didn't put Jesus' name in the it to. And, gee, we, we can't get into this because we, we can get into it another lesson. But he said, salvation is of the Jew. I'm going to tell you what he means. If you don't get the truth or you ain't getting taught this truth from an Israelite, you ain't going to get it right. And y'all got it all wrong. Y'all y'all doing Christmas. Y'all doing Easter. Y'all going to church on Sunday. Y'all eating pig meat. If you don't get it from here, and Jesus in red light, he just said, salvation is of the Jews. And even Paul said in his right, he said to the Israelites, we're given the covenants, the oracles of God, the uh, everything, the promises, all the answers to God was given to Israelites. And if you don't get it from us, you ain't going to get no salvation. You may think you're getting it, but you ain't getting it. Continue. But the hour will come and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is the spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So how you worshiping God? And we finna prove it to you. We're gonna read a little history. How you worship the true and living God in spirit and in truth when you keeping pagan holidays? When you keeping Christmas and Easter and, and Good Friday? You got to worship this God or this Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You got to worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you don't do that, you ain't worshiping the true and living God of this Bible. Now, we got a little history we want to read. And I know those of you who've been following along our lesson, y'all been hearing saying about sun worship this and sun worship that. So, and, and, and Christmas is just another part of sun worship because it's, it's about the winter solstice and what the winter solstice is, 
is when they celebrate the end of the shortness of days. Around December 25th, on December 25th, it is supposedly through their whatever is the shortest day of the year. After that, the sun starts staying up longer and longer. And this was a part of the sun worship that they started doing way back when. And we even going to read in the Bible what God was against, was, was against the sun worshipers. So, but I got a little history I want to read to you. And the title of it is Soul Invictus or the Unconquered Sun. Soul Invictus or the Unconquered Sun was the official sun god of the latter Roman Empire and patrons of soldiers. In 274, this is this 274. The Roman Empire Emperor Aurelian made it an, an official cult alongside the traditional Roman cults. Scholars disagree whether the new deity was a refoundation of the of the ancient Latin cult of soul, a revival of the cult El Elia Bagaius, or completely new. The god was favored by emperors after Aurelian and after uh and appeared on their coins until Constantine, the last inscription referred to Soul Invictus, uh, the Unconquered Son. Now, I'm going to skip down and read some other things. Constantine decreed March 24, 321, Die Solus, Day of the Sun, or Sunday, as the Roman Day of Rest. On the venerable Day of the Sun, let, let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest and let all the workshops be closed in the country. However, persons engaged in agricultural agriculture may freely and lawfully continue to their pursuits because it often happens that another day is not suitable for grain sowing or vine planting, lest by neglecting the proper moment for such operations, the bounty of heaven should be lost. This is what they say. Now listen to this. The idea that Christians choose to celebrate the birth of Jesus on 20, on December 25th because this was a date of an all of an already existing festival of Sol Invictus or Unconquered Sun was expressed in an annotation to manuscript to a manuscript of a work by 12th century bit Syrian bishop Jacob Bar Sabali. The scribe who added it wrote, it was a custom of the pagans to celebrate on the same uh, December the 25th on the birthday of the sun, S-U-N, at which they kindle lights. That's where you get all these lights and stuff on your houses and stuff from. Kindle lights in a token of festivity. And the solemnness and revivalists, the Christian also took part of it, meaning when they gathered these two things together, the Christian began to take part in this uh, pagan practice. Accordingly, the doctors of the church perceived that the Christians had a leaning to this festival. They took counsel and resolved that the true nativity should be solemnized on that day. So again, this is Babylonian worship, confusion by mixture, melting things together, and trying to put God's name on it. This is part of sun worship. Christmas is part of it. So you ye know not what ye worship. You do it in out of ignorance because mama and grandmama and great grandmama and all the people all down through the years and the whole world is under this cloak of lies. But it's pagan, it's not of God, and we're gonna dissect this Christmas thing right out the gate. So the first thing we're gonna look at. Is the time of the year when they say Jesus was born. So we're going to go to Ezra. Let's go to the book of Ezra. And let's go to chapter the 10. We're going to go to the book of Ezra. And we're going to go to chapter 10. And we're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up at verse 9. We're going to read verses 9 through. We're going to read verse 9. Then we're going to skip down and read verse 13. Ezra 10, 9, when you get it, go ahead and read. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month, and on the twentieth day of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. So it was the ninth month of the year, 
All right, I want you to pay, pay close attention to this. Now, keep in mind, we ain't talking about the Gregorian calendar. We talking about God's calendar. And as we know, the year starts uh, in the month of Abib. And we know this because you go into uh, the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and you can go into Exodus and also Deuteronomy. He tells you that this month shall be the beginning of the month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So we're in the ninth month in this book of Ezra. Skip down to verse 13 and read what it say, brother. But the people are many, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand without. Neither is this a work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed in this thing. Now, this is the ninth month of the Lord's count. And it said it was great rain, okay, great rain. So much as it was so rain, so much rain and cold that they was trembling. All right, so keep that in mind. Keep the ninth month in the mind. Let's go over Luke. We're gonna see a sharp contrast in the weather. Let's go to Luke chapter the two. Let's go to Luke chapter two. Let's go to Luke chapter the two, and we're gonna pick it up. At verse four, and then we're gonna skip down. Cause we're gonna we're gonna be in out of Luke for a little bit in a couple of these in in this lesson. So we're going to Luke two, and we're gonna pick it up at verse four. Go ahead. And Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into J Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Okay, skip down to verse eight. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping, watching over their flock by night. Okay. Now, anybody knows anything about the Holy Land, know that it is rainy and it is cold in the winter. But they want to celebrate Jesus' birthday on December 25th. Shepherds do not keep watch over their flock at night in the winter time. They do not do that. Can't do that, won't do that. They always, at the first sign of the first heavy rain, they begin to bring their sheep into the barns. They do not watch they, they, over their flocks at night in the winter because it's so much rain and so cold that they will not, cannot do that. So we just find out where we got December 25th, the Roman church, Constantine, pagan worship. We just went through with that it, it showed in the winter time, it was heavy rain and cold. And we just seen in Luke where they like to say, you know, they, they say it in all the Christmas plays. They say it in all the little TV shows. They try to, they quote this scripture. But shepherds don't watch over their flocks at night in the winter. Don't happen. All right. The next thing we go, the next thing we go hit, the very next thing we go hit is this three wise men. How many were there? Because, you know, Everybody had these little manger scene. And we're going to hit something else on this manger scene, too. But everybody always had these little manger scene. They had these three wise men around the manger. And we're going to show you that's not correct as well. So let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter the 2. Let's go to Matthew chapter the 2. And we're going to pick it up at verses 2. I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 7. And then we're going to skip to verse 9. Then we're going to read a little bit after that. So let's go to Matthew chapter 2. And let's start at verse 7. Go ahead. Then Herod, what he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Now here we have Herod, the king that was over Israel at the time. He was he was an Edomite king. Uh, he heard about the birth of, of this king of Israel. So he inquired of the wise men and he called them to him because he wanted to know about this baby and where should the baby be born. Not because he wanted to uh, so-called worship him, but he wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill this baby because Herod was the king over Israel at the time. Roman appointed. 
But he wanted to kill him because he, he felt that this child would be a threat to his throne. So let's skip down to verse 9 and continue. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. Uh, verse 11, and when they were and when they were coming to the house. Stop. Right there. Now, everywhere you'd have seen on TV, everywhere you'd have seen out in these four yards, these little nativity scenes in front of the churches and all that, the Bible said when they were entered into the house. But everywhere you see on TV and everywhere, the three wise men find a baby in the manger. Now, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to point out why I'm bringing this point up to you. Okay? I'm going to point out the reason why I'm bringing this point up to you. Because they want you to believe that the shepherds, the wise men, and all that was around the manger. That's what they sell you every year. They sell you that every year. And the reason why I know, I see it in my neighborhood. Straight God. Continue. Uh, I'm going to restart at verse 11. All right, go ahead. And when they and when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary Stop. and his mother. They said they saw the baby and his mother. That's a young child. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why I'm pointing these things out. Okay. Continue. Uh, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And myrrh. myrrh. And see, this is where they, this is where they get the three wise men because it was three gifts. That don't mean it was three wise men because it was three gifts. They just bought him three types of gifts. It could have been three wagon loads of each. That don't mean it was three wise men. The Bible just said the wise men. It didn't say three wise men, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It just said wise men. All right, where we at? Skip down to verse 16. Skip down to verse 16. Go ahead. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the, of the wise men. See, right there. By the time the wise men had found Jesus, he was two, almost. He had to be at least two years old, because Herod, when he found out the wise men weren't coming back to him, he told them to go out and kill all the kids two years old and, and, and under. Why do you? If, if the, he was still a baby, you just say, okay, every baby that's still on their mama's breast, all the newborn babies kill them. And then it also scripture also said that the wise men came into the house and saw the young child. Didn't say see the baby, like it says on Luke. Well, the shepherds found him wrapped in swaddling clothes. See, the shepherd was in the main, in the barn, but the wise men wasn't nowhere to be found. Another lie that they didn't fed y'all over all these years, and y'all eat it up like peanut butter and jelly. Some more garbage that they didn't fed y'all. And, and this ain't no long lesson. I just want to point out some of the, the, the garbage that y'all believe y'all try to put Jesus' name on it. Okay? Let's go. And we're going to be coming back here in a minute. But let's go to, let's deal with this Christmas tree. That's what I want to deal with. Let's deal with this Christmas tree thing. Okay. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, the chapter 10. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Didn't we, didn't we just do that one? No, we did, Matthew. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm still trying to get. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's let's go back. I'm sorry. Thank you. Let's go to Luke chapter the two. Let's go to Luke chapter the two. We're gonna get to this Christmas tree thing, but let's let's still deal with these wise men and this manger scene. Let's go to Luke two, and let's pick it up at verse seven, and then we're gonna skip because we going I told you we're gonna be back to Luke. Luke two, and verse seven. When you get it, go ahead. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in, in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Okay, so I thought the wise men went in the house. So, it, 
in the house, the the, the, the stables, or the, uh, cause they said one no room in the end. Now. So did did the wise men go in the house or did they go in the barn? The Bible said he went in the house and saw the young child, right? So if they saw a young child, he could have been wrapped in swaddling clothes, could he not? Okay. All right, skip down to verse 9. Go ahead. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the man. Stop right there, bro. The wise men was not in the barn or the stables when Jesus was born. We just read over in Matthew that they found a young child in the house. So don't believe the hype when you see the little stuff at the store and you want to buy the manger scene and Got the sheep and everything around, and the, and the shepherds and the wise men, because they weren't there. By the time they found Jesus, he was two years old, at least, because Herod had all the babies two years old and younger murdered and killed. Okay, so I just want to point. Skip down to verse fifteen, brother. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord have made known unto us. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Uh, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And the wise men in there. Nah. Just they, the shepherds. Just the shepherds found Mary, Joseph, and the babe lying in the manger. Mm -hmm. Just the shepherds. So don't believe it. Y'all get them nativity scenes at y'all at y'all yards and at y'all houses. Because they're incorrect and they're unbiblical. All right, let's move on to this Christmas tree thing. Let's move on to this Christmas tree thing. Like I told you, we ain't going to keep you long tonight. But I do want to say this. To any and everybody that, that will watch this video, our, 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 my brother, our pastor is going to be doing a, a, a lesson, a more in-depth lesson on Christmas tomorrow. Come out to 4485 Elvis Presley Boulevard at 1, 1 o'clock, 1.30. Be there. You want to get some more instruction? You want to get some more knowledge? Come on out. Now, let's deal with this Christmas tree thing. Let's deal with this Christmas tree thing. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. And we're going to chapter the 10. And we're going to see what the Most High has to say about this Christmas tree. All right? We're going to see what the Most High has to say about this Christmas tree. Chapter 10, Jeremiah the 10. And we're going to pick it up at verse 2. When you get it, go ahead and read, brother. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the evil. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Told right there. He said, learn not the way or the customs of the heathen. Meaning anybody who was not Israel. He said, don't learn their way. Don't learn their customs. Go ahead. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Wait a minute. Be not dismayed at the sign of heaven. Signs of heaven. Go ahead. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Mm -hmm. For the customs of the people are vain. Wait a minute. The customs of the heathen or the nations, anybody other than Israel, is for nothing. He said the custom of the people are vain. They mean he he mean they doing it all for nothing. You doing every all you call holy or Christian, you doing it for nothing if you ain't doing it according to this Bible. He said the custom of the people are are vain. He's telling Israel, don't do what they do. Go ahead. For one cut of the tree out of the forest, the work of the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. And, and, and y'all doing it today. Y'all cut, y'all go to the tree lot or y'all go to Walmart or talk and get y'all a artificial tree, but some of y'all still dragging those artificial those, those real trees in y'all house. He said, and don't go cut no trees down at the forest and do what? Continue. Uh, they deck it with silver and gold. Wait a minute. What holiday do you know where they bring a, where y'all bring trees in y'all house and y'all deck it with silver and gold? Y'all got the little baubles, the garland, and all that is silver and gold. You know, they say in this little song on Rudolph, silver and gold, silver and gold. He telling you don't do that custom because it's vain and it is not of me. Go ahead. 
they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moved. And, and, and they used to fasten it with nails and hammers. You know, you see the little old time picture where they had a little crop, little X wood, and they, they nail it to the floor. Now they got the little mechanical screws and stuff that you can keep it from moving. But this is, he, he telling you, and see, let me tell y'all something. This custom, this is in the book of Jeremiah. This was centuries, centuries before Jesus Christ came in the flesh, before Jesus Christ was born. They was already doing this. So how you going to wait till Jesus come and say, we're going to do this for him, for Jesus? They was already doing it before Jesus got here. And God told you, do not do this custom. Do not follow this custom because it is not of God. They were putting silver and gold on trees way before Jesus was born. So how you going to attach Jesus' name to it? We read you out of the history where how the Roman Empire Worship the sun on December the 25th. So now you got pagan practices of worshiping the sun on December 25th. And you got people cutting down trees and decking with silver and gold on December 25th. Way before Jesus was even born. So what does, what does a tree have to do with the birth of the Messiah? Nothing. All right. Did we finish that? Oh, verse 5. All right. Continue. They are upright as the palm tree, mm -hmm. but they but speak not. Uh -huh. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Hmm. Be not afraid of them, for for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Mm -hmm. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, for thou art great, and thy name is great in my. And see, y'all call about these trees. Y'all 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 just don't bring them in y'all house around Christmas time and. And, and, and bow down to them. And I know y'all saying, well, I don't bow down to a tree. You got to bow down to put the ornaments on them. You got to bow down to put the presents up under it. You got to, you know, and you sitting there, you looking at it, you admiring it. That's idolatry. But y'all don't only do that. Y'all make statues and carvings of crosses and all that. And he said, these trees can't do nothing. You carved it out with your hand. But you giving homage, you paying homage to it and bound, and bound before. You know, they don't breathe, they can't talk, they can't see, but you paying all this attention, giving all this admiration to this piece of wood, this tree. All right, brother, let's let's move further. Let's move further. Let's go to Habakkuk. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk. I know some of y'all don't know what Habakkuk is. It's in the Old Testament, a little bit after Nahum, right after Nahum, you got the book of Habakkuk. All right, and we're going to Habakkuk, the chapter 2. And we ain't going to read but two verses here. We're going to read verses 18 and 19. What does it say, brother? What profit of the graven image that the maker thereof have graven it? Mm -hmm. The molten image and the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. Mm -hmm. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, awake to the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. See, there you go again. This is the brother Habakkuk telling you. Y'all bring, y'all making these things, this wood and this stone, and overlaying it with gold and silver, and, and, and acting like it's a god. And it's dumb, and it can't hear, and it can't talk. And he said, he said there is no profit in it, meaning just like he said in the book of Jeremiah, it's vain, it's for nothing. It, 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 it profits you nothing. Only thing you're going to have after this holiday is a bunch of bills that ain't paid and a bunch of more bills you can't pay. That's all this holiday does. They making merchandise of you. Year in and year out. All right? Now, we're going to deal with this. We're going to deal with another little aspect of this Christ mass holiday, as they want to call it. Christmas holiday. They say, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. That's a lie. That's a damnable lie. Jesus is not the reason for this season. But we're going we're gonna to deal with something else they like to do, this mother and child worship. Okay? And in nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to worship mother and child. But like always, as Israelites do, we always disobey our God. So let's go to Jeremiah. Well, I tell you what, I want to read a little something. Well, I, ain't, I you know, I ain't gonna, for the sake of time, I ain't going to read. But look, I want to show y'all something. This book right here, Mystery Babylon, Babylon Mystery Religion. Y'all need to go out and get this book if you can find it. 
This book details this mother and child worship, this Babylonian mystery religion, this sun worship, and all where all this stuff started from. And I'm going to give you a quick little synopsis on it. This book details how the Babylonian mystery religious got started. It got started with Nimrod, who married his mother. He married his mother and had a baby by her. And the baby's name was Tammuz, and it, that baby's name is mentioned in the Bible. But on down through the years, you know, you see these pictures of, 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 of what they call the Virgin Mary and, and, and Jesus. It all really started in Babylon with uh, Samarimus and Tammuz, and then it moved to Egypt. And everything I'm, I'm telling you, you can look it up and read it, or you can get this book and read it and find out for yourself, documented history. It's not nothing you can't find out. It started with Samaritans and Tammuz, and then it moved to uh, 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 Egypt with Isis and her, her, her son uh, Horus. And now it's just it, they just conveniently put the Virgin Mary and, and Jesus into this mother and child worship. Even in the Catholic Church now, they, they believe that you can pray to the Mother Mary. You, know, you see them with all these statues of this, this person who's supposed to be Mary, which is still ethnically incorrect, the statue they have, because Mary was an Israelite. That being said, she was not a white or Gentile person, which that's, that's incorrect as well. But anyway, Samaria has deemed herself a goddess or the queen of heaven. And we're going to read a little bit about this mother and child worship. You know, they got that song, Silent Night, and all that mother and child and all. This is where all they get all this garbage from. So we're going to deal with this mother and child thing a little bit. And uh, let's, let's pick it up in Jeremiah, brother. Let's go to Jeremiah the 7. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 18. Jeremiah chapter 7. And we're going to read verses 7, I mean 18 through 19. Go ahead. The children gather wood, and mm -hmm. the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings. But uh, unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Stop right there. And that's what y'all do. In the wintertime, around this time of year, you know, y'all go out and you got your fireplace going, y'all killing the wood. You know, you know, you got mama in there needing her dough, making cakes and holidays and cakes and red velvet cakes and sweet potato pies and all that. That's what y'all do around this time of year. And, and, and when I say that, don't get me wrong, when me and my family was caught up in the, in, 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 in this D live. But, you know, the most high opened my eyes because I've always wanted to know the truth. But everything I'm reading to you, you, you see how y'all, it, it's detailing what y'all do around this time of year. Y'all singing about the mother and the child. Y'all bringing Christmas trees in y'all house. Y'all making cakes and dough. And all that got your fireplaces going. You see what I'm saying? You got the little nativity scene that's wrong. All that is a part of this pagan holiday that y'all try to, Make be holy or make be part of what the Most High wants for your life. Continue, brother. Do they provoke me to anger, said the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? And, and, and we are right now. We don't know who we are and don't nobody else know who we are. We have provoked the Lord to the confusion of our own faces. You go up and tell somebody you Israel, you the true Israel. People look at you like you retarded. They think something wrong with you. But this has all been brought upon us by the sins of our forefathers and our continued sin. And God let this happen to us. But we're going to go a little bit further. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah the 44. Jeremiah chapter 44. And we're going to pick it up at verse. We're going to read verses 2 through 5. Then we're going to skip down a couple of times. All right. Let's pick it up at verse 2. When you get it, go ahead, brother. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are a desolation and no man dwelleth therein because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger and that they went, went to burn incense and to serve other gods whom they knew not. Neither they ye nor your fathers. 
How be it, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not do this abominable thing, abominable thing that I hate. And, and, and on, on the behalf of the true and living God of this Bible, dare not call myself a prophet. But he said, he sent his prophet to you early, saying, always trying to send somebody to you, saying, do not do these abominable things. And it's to that point which we're saying, Cease from doing these abominable things because he's sending us and people like us to y'all saying, hey, we've been taught wrong. We didn't learn wrong. These things have been lies and we need to start worshiping the true and living God. Not the way we want to, but the way he tells us to. See, you can't do that thing. You serve God your way. I serve God my way. No, you, go, you don't tell the master how you going to do things. He tells you how things are going to be done. You don't tell your boss on your job how you going to do that. So what makes then you going to tell the God of this universe how you going to serve him? You can't do that. And so we come to y'all saying, hey, this Christmas thing and every other thing you've never seen on any other video, we've been lied to. We've been practicing paganism, false worship. So it's time to wake up, people. Continue, brother. But they hearken not, nor inclined. And they ain't hearken, they ain't listening today. Nor inclined their ear to turn from their wickedness to burn incense unto other gods. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my fury and my anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. And they are wasted and desolate at this day. All right, skip down to verse 11. Uh, Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will set my face against you for evil and, and to cut off all Judah. And we were cut off. And this is God saying he going to set his face against you. So when the, the God or the creator of the universe sets his face against you, ain't nothing nobody else can do for you. Continue. And I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to join there, and they shall be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. They shall even be consumed by the sword and by famine. They shall die from the least even unto the greatest by the sword and by the famine. And they shall be in disgrace and astonishment and curse and a reproach. And we were, and we were, when we went into the land of Egypt, that's where we got taken off in the land of Ham. We got set on the ships and we being killed to this day. By the sword, and we are an astonishment, and we are an embarrassment unto all people. And that's what's wrong with us now, because we're keeping these pagan holidays, these pagan practices, and not doing what does say the Lord. And we have been killed by groves throughout the centuries. Ever since we got ran of our land and we fled into Egypt, we've been getting killed, and we've been an astonishment. All right, skip down. Skip down, brother, to verse 14 and read. So that none of the remnant of Judah, which are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or remain. That they shall return into the land of Judah, to which they have a desire to return to dwell there. For none shall return, but such shall escape. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that d dwelt in the land of Egypt in Pathros, asked Jeremiah, saying, as for, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. And, and right now, we on this video, brothers around the country, around the world on video, doing sermons on, on the Sabbath day, Coming to y'all saying, hey, man, this ain't from God. This ain't from Lord. And just like our ancestors, you know what they said? We don't want to hear. Jeremiah telling them, look, y'all need to turn from this. Y'all need to stop doing this. And they telling Jeremiah, look, we ain't going to hearken unto you. We ain't listening unto you. And they doing it to this day. You tell people that Christmas is pagan. You shouldn't be chopping down, bringing no trees in your house and decking it with silver and gold. And they tell you, man, I don't want to hear that. I'm going to do it anyway. And God's he's going to turn his face from you. And he's going to make sure that he turned his face toward you for nothing but evil. Continue, brother. But we will certainly do whatsoever 
thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. See how smart they get with Jeremiah? Yep. Go ahead. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings, our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. And see, and they doing it, they, they saying the same thing that's going on now. They said, we're going to do like we want to do. We're going to do what our forefathers did, our kings and our princes, mean your rulers, your presidents, your mayors, your governors, your senators, everybody that's in power, they doing it. Our forefathers did it, and we doing it. You see it on the TV. You hear it on the radio. You see it in the store. Everybody doing it. What can be wrong with it? Then you got people like us saying, hey, man, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be eating that pig meat. You shouldn't be celebrating Christmas. And they say, hey, everybody else doing it. We going to do it too. Continue. But we will certainly do. Uh, I'm sorry. This, no, uh, verse 18. 18. Since we, uh, but since we left out to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour our drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burn incense to the queen of heaven and poured our drink offerings unto her, did we make cakes to worship her and pour our drink offerings unto her without our men? See that now the women, they blaming the men for not stepping in and doing nothing. But hey. Everybody got to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. You shouldn't be pointing the finger saying Big Mama them did it or my past and faith and all that. You got to, if you know something is right, do it. If you know something is wrong, don't be involved in it. Don't be pointing the finger at nobody else. You got to do this thing for yourself. And you know, now that and then they said when we stopped pouring out drink off of the floor, then we didn't have none. Well, God had turned his back on you now because you ain't been keeping it lost that to the command. You've been doing pagan, heathen practices. Continue, brother. Verse 20. Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women, and all the people which had given him their answer, saying, The incense that ye burn in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not, did not the Lord remember them? And came in not into his mind. Hmm. So that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings. And because of the abominations which he have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as at this day. See, it come a point in time with God where there is no remedy. And I can read that to you. That's in the book. See, it come a, come, it come a point in time. After he didn't say he didn't try to come into your mind or come into your heart for after so long, then he gonna say, "Hey, I'm gonna turn you over to the tormentors." He said, "The reason why your land is in desolations, the reason why your kings and your princes and all these have turned wicked, is because y'all have been doing pagan practices and wickedness." And so it come a point in time where there is no remedy. You can't fix it. You want to deal with what you want to deal with. That's why I tell everybody. You better do what's right, even if it don't give you no immediate benefit, because seed time and harvest gonna always remain. And I ain't just talking about physical seed. I'm talking about spiritual, emotional, and uh, 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 spiritual, emotional seed. They gonna come back to get you. They either gonna reach, reap you a reward, or they gonna reap, reap you a punishment. So it come a point in time with God. Well, hey, hey, he say, hey, ain't no remedy. You gonna get what you gonna get, and that's what it's gonna be. Did you finish that? Verse 23. Go ahead and finish. Because ye have burned incense and because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies, therefore this evil is, hap is happened unto you at, as at this day. He said, serve me the way you want me to want to serve me. He said, because you have not walked in my law and walked in my statutes and my testimony, has this evil come upon you. That's why you going through the stuff that you go through because you're keeping these vain customs, you're getting broke and all that, and then you still, then all of a sudden something happened. You ain't keeping no law. This is Jeremiah the prophet talking to Israelites. These things were put here for an example. You ain't keeping no law. All right, moving further. Let's go to Ezekiel to chapter 8, brother. Let's go to Ezekiel. 
And we're going to chapter 8. And we're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up at verse 14. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 14. When you get it, go ahead. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, mm -hmm. there said women weeping for Tammuz. Weeping for Tammuz. This is what I was just talking about, about this, this Babylonian misreligion and this, this, this so-called Babylonian God. Continue reading. Then he said unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abomination than thee. Go read verse 16. I think I left that out, but keep reading. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord. What was they doing? And their faces towards the east, and they worship the sun towards the east. Now, we read y'all the history on sun worship. We read y'all where it all got started in this book. And I, I, I admonish you again to get this book. Here we got Israelites standing in front of the temple of the Most High God, sun worshiping, worshiping the sun. This is all sun worship. It's all pagan like I've been telling y'all. Like we've been telling y'all Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath. They was doing sun worship. And what did God call it? He called it a great Greater ab abomination. They facing the east and they worshiping the sun. All right. So much for that mother and child worship, the queen of heaven and all that garbage. Let's see what's going to keep you from doing that. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 12. Let's go back to the old book. Deuteronomy in chapter 12. And we're going to pick it up and we're going to read verses 30 through 32. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Verse 30. Take heed to thyself that thou not be snared by following them. After that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. See, you ain't got no business practicing Christmas. Because even when he led the children of Israel into the land right before, he said, inquire not after that God. Don't say, uh, how do these people serve their God? Well, you say, well, I, I, I'm serving the God that my mama and my daddy and my grandma. No, no, you ain't. You ain't serving the true and living God of this Bible. See, you serving that other Jesus that Paul talked about. You know, you serve the God of Christmas. You serve the God of Easter. The God of sun worshiping. You ain't following the God of this Bible. He said, inquire not after their gods. You see what I'm saying? Continue on, brother. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God for every abomination to the Lord, which he hated. Didn't he call sun worshiping an abomination? Yeah. Didn't he say don't worship Tammuz? With the Babylonian God, did he say that was an abomination? Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. Have daughters, they have burnt fire in fire uh, uh, to their gods. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from See, you shouldn't be adding thereto, nor take it. He said, whatever I command you, observe to do it. That means... Well, if they keep it Christmas, your mama and sister and brother and everybody keep it Christmas, don't you do it. If everybody want to go get their Easter bash and their Easter suit and say their Easter speech, don't you do it. If everybody want to go out and barbecue and put pig meat on their plate, don't you do it. You do what does say the Lord. You keep this book in front of you at all times and study it all times. He even said in the book of Joshua, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. He said, And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. He didn't say, he told you learn not to wear the heathen who bring a tree in their house and deck it with silver and gold, didn't he? He said, Whatever I command you to do, observe to do. 
Okay? Where we at, brother? We finished that? Yeah. Let's go over to Matthew. Let's go to the new book. Let's flip back over to the new book. Let's go to Matthew, the chapter 15. Matthew 15. And we're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up at verse 8. And we're going to read verses 8 through 9. Go ahead, brother. These people draw nigh to me with their lip, with their mouths. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Is it a? Have you ever read in the Bible where He commanded you to keep Christmas? Not one time. Have you ever read in the Bible where He told you to to bring a tree in your house and deck it with silver and gold? Nope. So. He said, how be it in vain do they worship me? Again, doing it for nothing. Doing it for nothing. You try to put Jesus as a reason for the I can't read that. I can't read that. And he said, you honor me with your lip. Me. They Jesus, 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 you Christ, Christ, Christ all day long. Jesus, read them, see. Oh, this is the hottest day, see, then. Uh, all that old God. He's the reason for every season. Thank you, brother. He the reason for every season. So, he said, how be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men, not the commandments of God. They teaching the commandments of men. Let's go to Mark 7 and 7. Let's go to Mark 7 and 7. All right. And it, 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 this is Mark's account of the same thing. He just put it a little bit different, but he's saying the same thing. Go ahead, brother, and read it. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, laying aside the commandment of God. Ye hold, you, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things. He said, y'all, you know, y'all, y'all worshiping me in vain. He said, because y'all still teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. He said, for the laying aside of the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. He said, as the washing of pots and cups. He said, y'all put the, the, the commands of men in just about here, everything, even the washing of your dishes, as, as y'all put it up on the same level of the commandment of God. Or y'all lay aside the commandment of God and put one of y'all traditions up. Just like this Christmas, this Christmas season, God. Y'all keep that, but y'all won't keep uh, Passover. They won't keep Tabernacle. They won't keep it on that, but they'll, they'll celebrate Halloween. Yeah. Some straight satanic garbage. <laughs> but y'all lay aside the commandment of God just like wash. Y'all say, oh, I, I got to wash my clothes. I got to wash my dishes. But you won't even pick up the book and read it. You won't even get him one day. He said, you got six days to do everything you want to do. Just give me one day. He said, you keep all your money and get buck wild with it. Just give me 10%. Y'all lay the, aside the commandment of God, but y'all keep the commandments of me. Don't even make that. Do that make any sense to you? Give him one day. Don't wash your car. Don't go shopping. You know what I'm saying? Don't do no cooking. Don't do no cleaning. Just rest and get into my word. Just one day. Six days you can get buck wild as long as you ain't breaking no law. Just give me one day and we can't do that. We can't even do that. But we going to watch that car. We going to keep them rims shining. We going to keep our hair done. Nail done. What is on hair done? Nail. We going to do that. But we ain't going to keep no law. Let's go further, brother. Let's go to we got one, one more place after this one. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go back to the book of Matthew chapter 9. 19, I'm sorry. Matthew the 19. Matthew 19. And we're going to pick it up in verse 16. We're going to read two verses here, verses 16 through 17. Go ahead, brother. And behold, one came unto him and said unto him, Good master. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And what did Jesus say? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Simple, cut and dry, no big long drawn out thing. And if you read on down, 
You know, the young the young man said, I kept all these from my youth. But he asked Jesus, he asked him a point blank question. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Because that's what y'all say y'all want. You know what I'm saying? He said, and Jesus told him one simple sin. If you want to inherit or, or, or walk in eternal life, he said, keep the commandments. Now, this in red letters, New Testament, and he's still talking about keeping the commandments. But y'all keeping Christmas. Y'all believe in the shiny red and old reindeer that can fly. See what I'm saying? Y'all believe in a fat white man coming down your chimney with some presents. Y'all believe that snowmen can talk. See, y'all think Jack Frost is an actual man blowing the cold wind. See what I'm saying? That's what y'all believe. But y'all don't want to keep no law. Jesus said, if you want to inherit eternal life, keep the command and don't do what the heathen do, sun worshiping and dragging trees in your house. You can't do that. He said, keep the commandment. Now, what does a tree and a fat man and a red and old reindeer got to do with eternal life and the commandment? Nothing. Nothing. That's what I thought. Last place. Let's go to the last place. Let's go to the book of 1 John. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. And we got two verses. The last two verses. We're going to read verses 1. I mean, I'm sorry, verses 2 and 3. 1 John 5. We're going to read verses 2 and 3. Go ahead, brother. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Keep his what? Commandments. So this is how you know that you love your so-called brother and sister. And this is how you know you love God by doing what? Keeping the commandments. Keeping the commandments. Go ahead and read. For this is the love now, of God. Now he said, now listen what John is saying. He said, for this, he's going to tell you what love is and what the love of God. He said, for this is, go ahead. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous or burdensome. It's not burdensome for you to keep the Sabbath day. It's not burdensome for me not to steal. It's not burdensome me to keep the high days. It's not a burden for me. But you are burdened because you're going into debt. you stressing. you stealing. you killing because you can't get your baby, that G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. you stressing because you can't get your girlfriend, your wife, your man, that diamond ring or that watch he want or them joys, that baby, that Ray Ray and Pookie didn't want that Xbox. You stressing, that's grievous. That's bringing grief. You not paying your light bill so you can go get big mama that coat she want to wear on the Sunday church day. You see what I'm saying? God, he said, my commandments are not grievous. They are not vain. You see what I'm saying? You, you charging up all your credit card because you want everybody to have a big Merry Christmas. Now you got, but you forget, you got to pay that, and not only pay that, with compounded interest. That's grievous. That's grievous. <laughs> Me, I'm stressing on how I'm going to pay my bills and get everybody something crib to make everybody happy. I done been through that. That's garbage. He said, my law, my commandments are not grievous. And he said, read verse 3 one more time, brother. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not greedy. You say you love God. You say you love Jesus. That's why you celebrate Christmas. Keep his commandments. That's how you show you love God. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You want to enter into life? Keep the commandments. You want to love your brother and sister? Keep the commandments. We just read all this. You don't keep pagan days, holidays. Keep the holy days and forget about the holidays. Okay, once again, that's the lesson, the name of the lesson, the Christmas story of deception of the enemy. Once again, I admonish you to come out to the Israel of God fellowship with us. Come out and listen to the lesson. We're going to go into a little bit more detail. I just wanted to hit on some of the high points of this, this, this Christmas season, how everybody try to mix Jesus into all this garbage. But, hey, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We only coming to y'all. Uh, because we, we have love for our brothers and sisters, even those who are not walking in truth. We love our loved ones just like anybody else love their loved ones. And we just bring y'all the straight truth, the straight book, and we're going to keep it 100% like we always do. All right? 
So, peace and blessings. I hope y'all have a happy Sabbath. All praise, honor, and glory due to the Most High, for he and he alone is worthy, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To my brothers and sisters in the faith, mm, I salute you. We're going to get out of here. We're going to holler at you next week. Peace.